Hey, Vinyl Community, how's it going? So I never did a tribute video to Michael Nesmith on my channel, although I did see quite a few great ones out there. Glenn Kellaway did a great tribute video, Sam St. John, fantastic Michael Nesmith tribute video, Chris Profi, uh, Gary Physical Format. Uh, quite a few people have done tribute videos of Mike Nesmith, so... I certainly could not do it any better than they did. But one of the things that I was thinking of, as far as Mike Nesmith as a songwriter, he has quite a few songs where the song title is not in the lyric of the actual song. Um, Carlisle Wheeling, Nine Times Blue, Tapioca Tundra, um, Good Clean Fun, Daily Nightly, uh, Papa Jean's Blues, all songs where... The title of the song appears nowhere in the lyric of the song itself. And so what I wanted to do today is I thought up a list of 10 of my favorite tracks, not by the, necessarily by the Monkees or Mike Nesmith. I already given you my Mike Nesmith list. Um, but I wanted to do just 10 songs by any artist, 10 favorites of mine where the song title appears nowhere in the actual lyrics of the song. And I'm not talking about, um, you know, like a song that has as its title, um, Your Blues or uh, whatever, um, you know, Crossroads Blues or anything where the this song, you know, where it makes plain that it's a blue song or the rain song or something like that. Basically, you know, I don't want to cheat that way because you've got a lot of song, you know, tombstone blues, revolution blues, your blues. All that. Like, no, that's just, it's telling you it's a blues song. It's not, that's not what I'm talking about. If you get my meaning anyway, and hopefully as I go through my list, that will become uh, pretty obvious uh, what I'm talking about. So, number 10, uh, Steely Dan, The Caves of Altamira. This was off the Royal Scam album. I always love this track. It's about somebody stumbling around and finding a cave painting. Um, but anyway, I always dug it. The Royal Scam for me is definitely Steely Dan's darkest album. Uh, a lot of pretty dark subject matter that they cover, with the exception of this song. Uh, but it's just an interesting song about cave paintings, I guess. Uh, but I still like that one a lot, even though the title appears nowhere in any of the lyrics. Number nine. I'm going to go to my synth pop um, fandom here for Bizarre Love Triangle by New Order. This was such a huge alternative club track uh, in the 80s when I was growing up. Everybody in college would play this at parties. It was just one of those huge, catchy, infectious, danceable synth pop songs. Um, still today, most people, you, you put on five seconds of the song and people can immediately recognize what it is. Um, but I don't talk enough about New Order on this channel for whatever reason, but they are one of my favorites. Uh, number eight, speaking of alternative, The Headmaster Ritual by The Smiths. Great, great track off the Meat is Murder album. Great guitar work by Johnny Marr. Great lyrics. We don't need no education style lyrics from The Smiths. Um, but just a great track. I love the opening intro. It starts off very aggressive and then it kind of cools down a little bit. It gets into the verses and um, you got Morrissey yodeling uh, in the chorus, uh, what have you, which is pretty cool. So I've always had a real affection for that song. Number seven, Van Halen, The Full Bug. I love Diver Down. I know there's people who don't care for it. They think it's one of Van Halen's weakest albums. But even if you don't like the rest of that album, you got to admit, the full bug kicks ass. I do like the rest of Van Halen, Diver Down, by the way. But especially the full bug. Just a great um, up-tempo, uh, frenetic uh, kind of a track. And it's always been a standout song for me on that album. 
Number six, now we're getting into the monkeys, and this was a song composed by Mickey Dolan's Randy Scow's Git. I always love that. Of course, in England, he had to retitle it alternate title because apparently Randy Scow's Git is an offensive, obscene kind of a title for a track, I guess. Um, I forget the what it exactly translates into in... Um, I don't know, even, it's some kind of English slang, um, but the song itself, it's almost punk rock in a minute, like those, the chorus, why don't you cut your hair with the big, the booming drums, and then it's got kind of a very bouncy, upbeat chorus, and then back in, or I'm sorry, up, the verses are kind of bouncy and lighthearted, and then it just kind of hits you over the head in the chorus, which... I love that contrast there. I think that is very cool. Almost predates grunge a little bit. Um, number five, going to the Beatles for Love You Too, a George Harrison track off the Revolver album. One of three George Harrison compositions on Revolver. Uh, it's a totally India Indian flavored track. But I think it's done very well. It was one of those songs I used to skip over when I was younger. It was like, eh, I don't want to listen to that Indian crap. But now I definitely I appreciate it a lot. Um, and I kind of dig the whole Indian kick that George was on. And that song, I think, is very cool uh, as well. Um, number four, Bob Dylan has a lot of these songs. But definitely one of my favorites are... It takes a lot to laugh. It takes a train to cry off the Highway 61 Revisited album. Um, and it's interesting because he, uh, if you listen to the bootleg series that covers um, this period of 1965, um, he tried this track a number of different ways. And then the one he settled on was kind of a rollicking blues shuffle track i guess for want of a better word i don't know it just works it's very cool um i love the lyrics i love the melody i love everything about it i think bob dylan sings are great and it's a, just a great track on a great album might be my favorite bob dylan album for that matter number three uh led zeppelin four sticks speaking of indian music and kind of an eastern flavor uh, to this track. I think originally the Indian instruments were more pronounced, um, but the released version, it's got some of that, but it's a little more subdued. It's more of the drums and the bass. Down, 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 down. I don't even know what time signature that's in, but um, very cool uh, track. Um, that whole album, I mean, from start to finish, just amazing. But Four Sticks, don't talk about Four Sticks at all in the lyrics. Um, and I could have put um, Bro Yar Stomp on here. Um, could have put Jer Maker as well. Led Zeppelin has some tracks like that. But this is the one I'm going with. Number two, Pink Floyd Brain Damage off Dark Side of the Moon. One of my favorite Pink Floyd songs off my favorite Pink Floyd album. Yeah, love it. The Lunatic is on the grass. Love that Dear Prudence kind of guitar lick that you have going throughout the song. It's the only Roger Waters vocal on Dark Side of the Moon, but he sings it so well. Um, and I love it. And number one, can you guess? The Who, Baba O'Reilly, the leadoff track on my favorite Who album, Who's Next? What more can be said? It's just great. Early use of synthesizer, which I had to imagine it blew people's minds back in the day. A lot of people think it's called Teenage Wasteland, but it's not. Um, but love the track. I know it's a hybrid of Meher Baba and um, somebody, Riley, I, I forget now. I can't think of it, but... Um, I guess it's kind of a cool title, uh, but one of my all-time favorite Who tracks. It's anthemic. It's a great stadium rocker. Bands are still covering it today. But anyway, so I'm just having some fun with that list. 
Uh, maybe if you've got some suggestions as well, you want to do your own video, you want to tell me to piss off, you can do that too. Uh, but anyway, hope you're doing well and take care.